Hey guys, happy Monday. Thanks for dropping in here tonight. I am happy to have you join me. So I am working on the border for my splendid sampler quilt along quilt. I got some fabric all ready to go. Uh, first, I'm going to do the math for the border uh, just to find out like how much fabric I need to cut to sew it together. Uh, eventually we'll sew it together tomorrow hopefully uh, but I, I did the math already kind of by hand but I kind of wanted to show you my process a little bit for doing that and maybe you guys have some tips I don't do this all that often so <laughs> I want to make sure that I have uh, my calculations right I have my calculator out here we'll see how it goes and then we will cut some fabric so thanks again for coming in if you're new my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. And I'm here every night at 9.30 p.m. Central. We are working, we're still working on the Splendid Sampler quilt along. We finished the top. I just have the border and the back to go. Then we got to sandwich it together and quilt it up and put a binding on. So there are still some steps, but we're, we're cruising along. I'm, I'm confident that we'll get it done eventually here. So thanks for coming in again, guys. I'm going to flip you around and we'll get started with math, which is not good for me after like 5 p.m. So we'll see how it goes tonight. All right, guys. Here we are. So I have my um, fabric here. Uh, this is going to be for, I'm going to do two borders and I'll show you that in a sec. This is going to be the larger border and this is going to be a thinner border. However, uh, so I had, I showed this when I was at my parents' house. Uh, my mom had this on a bolt. I looked all over. I thought I had a bolt of this as well, but I don't. All I have is a half yard cut and I don't think that's going to be enough for the border. So... I'm going to supplement with this fabric, which was in all our splendid, uh, it was in my splendid sampler blocks. So I am going to uh, supplement with this fabric. So we'll have one little weird, weird little bit, uh, but hopefully, hopefully it'll be cute. Anyway, so here is kind of my plan. I drew it out already, but I, so this is me like figuring it out, but I wanted to, um, run it through with you guys just to make sure I did it all right and just to show you kind of my process. So my quilt top, it's um, 10 blocks by 11 blocks and it, uh, the finished size is six inches uh, total. So um, this side is going to be 60 inches finished and this side is going to be 66 inches finished. So I, uh, you know, and then this is divided up. You know, this is, this is the main part of the quilt that we finished, right? So I measured on the bed and I need a 14 inch border, which is actually pretty large, but I, I want it to overhang quite a bit. So, all right, this is, this is 14 inches. Um, so what I want to design is a two inch border. I thought this would be kind of cute. I want to do a two inch border around my main quilt area. So this is, this is two inches. Um, making this 12 inches, right? Because it's 14 inches total. So this, this uh, inner border is going to be our light blue. So that'll be this fabric plus our little, our tiny supplement of this fabric because I, I'm going to run out of this fabric, I think. And then this bigger part is going to be the background fabric, which is that really dark blue, that dark, really dark navy. So, all right. So we got this much. Uh, so I need to figure out how much fabric uh, is in here. So um, for the finished side or size, well, here, first of all, 
I need to think about the shapes of how I'm going to sew this. So like for this big border, I think we'll sew on the sides first. So I have a rectangle like this, you know, and the same, same over here, a rectangle like this. And then we'll do a, a rectangle around the whole thing. Oh, the lighter blue, this, this blue would be kind of cute for the, the binding too. I was thinking I might just do the dark as a binding, just so it looks like it goes into nothing. Um, you know, the same color as, as, uh, as this big fabric so it doesn't look like there's three edges. Did you measure the quilt top you have done to make sure? So I did measure, <laughs> I did measure it and it was close enough to the 60 inches by 66 inches that I think will be okay. Um, when I did the math before, I'm gonna have a lot of excess of these borders, so we'll be okay, I'm pretty sure. But I'm gonna give it a really good press on the front and I'll do a quick remeasurement. Um, so, but this is the thing. So it's going to be constructed of two borders on the side and then two big borders uh, on the top and bottom. So the same thing with this smaller one. I'll have, I'll have a rectangle on the side and a rectangle on this side and then one going all the way across and one going all the way across. So that's, that's kind of my construction of it. Uh, okay, so let's start with this inner border. All right, for, for these first two pieces, this side and this side, uh, I know the height is gonna be 66 inches, and you know what, I'm gonna add a seam allowance to this. So uh, if I add a quarter inch seam allowance and a quarter inch seam allowance, we're gonna be at 66 and a half inches. And then they're all gonna be, since I want it two inches wide, it's gonna be two and a half inches when I add um, the, the seam allowance. So by two and a half inches. So there's two of these. So I need to multiply this part by two. It, all of them are going to be two and a half inches long, so I don't need to know that. So I have, let's just write down all the numbers. So I have two of them, so let's write another 66 and a half. And you know, again, it's by two and a half inches, but they'll all be two and a half. And now these ones go across the 60 inches but they, owe it, they also go across that extra two inches from this border. So we need to add four more inches. So 60 plus two inches plus two inches uh, is 64 plus a seam allowance. Uh, sew the two colors together and treat as one border. Oh, that's interesting. How do I do that though? Because then I could do that, but then I'd have, I'd have to do these little rectangles the end, wouldn't I? All right, Jenna, that's freaking me out. I don't quite know how to manage that. Oh man, like I said, this is like my least thing that I'm good at is the math side of it. So let's just keep going here. Um, so this is gonna be 64 and a, and a half inches. So 64 and a half by 64 and a half. So our total um, number of inches, oh, Joe's a mite, of, mite of the corners. I don't think I can get that fancy. We're gonna go straight up um, simple rectangles because uh, I, <laughs> I don't know if I'll be able to do fancy mitre corners. Mitre corners are where you have the diagonal in the middle. Um, that's too much for me. We're gonna just do it like this for now. So let's just add this up really quick. Um, let me get my calculator up. Okay, so 66.5 plus 66, oops, 0.5 plus 64.5 plus 64.5. Okay, 262. Okay, so that's 262 by two and a half inches. Okay, but our fabric, is 42 inches wide, approximately. So let's divide this by 42. So this means I need six and a half cuts of my fabric to equal um, the 262 inches. So I'm gonna round that up to seven cuts. Seven cuts at two and a half inches. So does that make sense? 
I think you'll need 17 and a half if you cross cut the fabric. Okay, so that's the other thing, the cross cutting. Um, is that when we have like a diagonal to, to sew together? I'm not sure. 17 and a half if you cut across the fabric. Cut lengthwise if you can. Oh, see, so here's the deal. I only have that half a yard of fabric for this. So I, I think I can only get six, maybe even just five cuts out of here. And I do want to use this fabric. So um, lengthwise isn't going to get me any more with this fabric. So I'm going to do however many cuts of that, the width of fabric. And um, then I'm going to do the blue for the other little bit. So I don't know, guys. I think we'll just do it like this. I'm going to do seven cuts. Uh, that should give me plenty if I want to do the... Um, so instead of, there's two ways to sew together, uh, you know, because I'm going to have to join. I'm going to have to put joins in here. Uh, I can sew them together straight like that, or I can do them at an angle. This is sometimes preferred. So, you know, we're going to have an angle in here and an angle here. And, you know, because this is 66 inches is longer than the 42 inches of what the width of the fabric is. So anyway, um, I might just sew it straight because everything else is straight in here. Uh, you know, our blocks are just all straight. So I might just sew them straight across. I know it's not always the way that, um, you know, quilty people like doing it. Cut four with the fabric, giving you about 80 each. Oh, I, I wanna, I'm gonna not do an equal amount of, of the two, if, if that's what you're talking about. I wanna do mostly just the blue. So what it'll look like, is like all, all of this will be the dark blue. And then I might have like this and this be this weird lighter blue. So it's going to be kind of wonky and I kind of like that. Uh, it goes with the rest of the quilt kind of wonky and all together. So all right, we need seven cuts of the uh, small border. All right, let's figure at, at two and a half inches wide for each. So I'm gonna do the same thing for this bigger for this bigger border. Uh, again, I'm gonna go all the way across this way. So I have a rectangle here, same size rectangle here, and then these two smaller, uh, or these two um, on the sides first. So two rectangles on the sides, we'll sew on first, and then uh, the top and bottom here. So, all right. Man, we could almost figure out the binding cuts already too, couldn't we? Dang, I didn't do that math yet. <laughs> okay, so all right, so now let's let's see how big this is. So it needs to be 12 inches wide. So let's do this math again. So it's gonna be, oh, and a, and a half because we're gonna have a, a seam allowance. So 12 and a half inches, they're all gonna be by 12 and a half inches. Align the lighter blue on the light side of the quilt. Ooh, Josa, I like that idea. So the light side is, I think, down here. So maybe this lighter color will go down here. And I like the idea that it crosses over a corner. I mean, I could just do it so it's on a side, but I like, I kind of like that it crosses over the corner like that. But that's a good idea. I like the idea of that on, a, on um, the light side, which is this corner down here. Um, all right, so this has to be 12 inches, 12 and a half inches. All right, so it's 66 inches plus the extra two inches here and the extra two inches here. So 66, 68, 70 plus the half inch seam allowance. So that's 70 and a half. And we got two rectangles. So that's another 70 and a half. I'm sure you guys can probably do all this in your head a whole lot better than me, but man, this is how I have to get it done. All right. And then this big one, and there's two of those, we have the 60 inches plus the two inches, plus the two inches, plus the 12, plus the 12. So what is that? That's 60 plus four plus 24. That's 88 inches. Okay, right? Let me do that again. 60 inches, 62, 64, uh, and then 12 and 12 is 24. So, okay, 88 inches, 88, and then a, a half inch, oops, <laughs> not point. I almost wrote 0.5, but there, and a, and a half 
for the quarter inch seam allowance on each side and another 88 and a half for the other edge here. Um, okay, so this total is math. Gotta wake this guy up every time. All right. 70.5. I think my mom could probably do all this in her head. <laughs> She's really good at this stuff. Plus 88. And, you know, like there are super fancy ways to do this with, I mean, I guess they're not really that fancy, but, um, oh, 89 and a half. Oh no, just 80, 88 and a half. Um, holy crap. That's wrong. <laughs> Got some multiplication in there. All right. I love um, the Samsung calculator because you can delete in it. And I don't think you can do that on the iPhone. Okay, let's just double check that because I freaked myself out. So 70 and a half, 70 and a half, 88 and a half, 88 and a half. All right, 318. So we have 318 by two and a half inches. So again, our width of the fabric is 42 inches. And we are going to need a few, uh, like extra for all of these seam allowances, like each of these. Uh, well, I think I'm going to sew it like this. So I just need an extra uh, half inch. But, you know, remember for this one, for example, I only needed six and a half. I only needed six and a half cuts, but I'm rounding it up to seven. So we'll have plenty for whatever type of joining we want. And we'll see if we get the same, you know, excess here. Okay, so 318 inches divided by 42 inches. Yeah, so again, um, you know, we have like seven and a half uh, cuts. So I'm gonna round that up to eight cuts. So, oh, this is supposed to be 12. Eight cuts at 12 and a half inches each. Um, this is the large border. And you know what? Why don't we figure out that's wider than, okay. So if, if any of this looks, wackadoodle let me know i think we're okay still uh but i think you know let me know like scream if i'm if i'm doing this wrong but so i think for too much math i know right uh so seven cuts for of uh, by at, that are two and a half inches for the small border eight cuts that are 12 and a half inches for these big borders and then then obviously we'll have to sew them together you know, these will have some joins in here too. So like there might be a join there and a join here and, you know, so these will all have seams as well, but hopefully, you know, once it's quilted, then we won't really, really know, we'll, we won't really see them. Okay. So now why don't we talk about the binding right away since we are cutting. So the binding, let's see, I think two and a quarter inches? Is that, how, how wide do you guys do your binding? I think my mom does two and a quarter. Let me, okay, man, we're gonna have to do some more math. <laughs> so uh, let's just call it two and a half inches for a sec. Um, I have to draw it out. So two and a half inches. If we fold it over once, then we are, like I'm, I have to draw it all out. So here's my, binding folded in half. <laughs> so then it's a one and a quarter. If we sew one edge down, then that's, I lose that. And then the folding it over would be another quarter inch. Oh man, I don't know if I'm doing this right. Two and a half for, for the binding. You know what, why don't we just do two and a half because we're doing all these two and a half. You do two and a half. All right, I always I always get messed up on the binding, the width. So why don't we just do two and a half? Um, I'm gonna be doing that. Um... Oh, why are we doing math? I am trying to figure out the size of the border for my, my quilt and then we're gonna cut. I'm still gonna cut tonight. I know this is taking a while, but I think we're gonna get it down. All right, so let's, let's just do some more math. So this was 88 inches, right, for this, this side, and you know, then it's 80 and 88 inches down here. Uh, so this was, what was this? This was six, 66, 
Oh, this was 70 inches plus another 24 for these. Um, 70 plus 24 is 94. So this side, or this, this side, and this side is 94. So we need 88, 88, 94, 94 at, at minimum for the binding, right? Um, I'm doing it two and a half inches for the inside border so that it finishes to two inches. All right, I gotta do this math now. 88 plus, 88 plus 94 plus 94. So that's 364 divided by the 42 inches. All right, um, is the 8.6. So I'm gonna do nine cuts. I have a feeling I might need a little bit more because I will be sewing it like this. So I don't know, is that enough? I, I think I'll just start out with nine cuts. I can always cut one more. So in addition to this large border, I need nine cuts at the two and a half inches. Okay, guys, I think, um, I think we got it all. So <laughs> again, this is the math. Um, seven cuts of my 42 inch wide fabric. I'm going to cut them at two and a half inches and that will get me my inside border. Uh, I'm, I need eight cuts at 12 and a half inches, which is really big, um, for my large border. Need more for mitered corners. So I will have, oh yeah, for the mitered corners and joining strips. So do you think I need more than nine cuts? I think I was, what is 364? 364. 364 divided by 42 inches is 8.6. So that's a little less than half of a yard extra. That, that should be enough, don't you think? If not, if not, I can always cut another one. Nine cuts will be good. Okay, thanks guys. I need, I need to know that. So in addition, so this is, this is one color and this is another color. This is that dark blue. I need the eight cuts that are 12 and a half inch wide. And then I need nine additional cuts that are two and a half inch wide. And that'll be for the binding. So this should be all we need, right? Um, are we looking good? Because I'm, I'm, I want to cut this yet tonight. <laughs> Use uh, the AccuQuit to, to cut your um, two and a half inches. Oh, that's pretty sweet. That's a nice deal. Yeah, so um, it'd be nice to just, yes, put them in an AccuQuilt and have it all ready to go. All right, I'm, I'm calling it. This is what we're doing here. Uh, so, all right, let's start with the seven cuts that are two and a half inches. I'm going to get you guys a little taller here, I think. Hopefully we'll be okay. Okay, so I have, um, let's put this guy up here. I don't have a very large space to work in, so this will be interesting. All right, here is my blue. I am going to, I have it folded on, on a, the edge here, and I actually might fold it again. I don't always like to do this, but it does make it easier to cut. It might put like a little bend in it, but I think we'll be fine ultimately. So I'm going to give it a nice clean edge. Nope, Jennifer, I have not finished the back, but I'm, I'm kind of jumping into this so we can get the front done. Um, and then I, then I will make more of the back pieces. I'm kind of waiting on for my, my, uh, what's it? My, my label to come in too. All right. So let's get a clean edge here. And then we'll do the two inches. All right, and this guy's gotta get out of my way. So I can scooch over a hair. Actually, you know what? This might work better if I rotate this this way, then I can fit all of this on here. So I only have a half yard of this. So I'm gonna need to cut a bit more. I'm gonna line this fold, this bottom fold um, on one of my lines here. Hopefully we're, we're square enough. 
And I always get super duper nervous doing this. So, all right, let me get a straight edge for all of these. I'm aligning my ruler marks on the line as well, so I'm square. Let's do it! Oh, the birthday fairies are coming to finish yours. That's nice of them. <laughs> All right, so this should be our nice clean edge. And my my uh, rotary cutter is still kind of kind of dull. All right, now we're gonna do the double ruler just so I don't have to move my clean edge. So this is two and a half inches. Just double checking two and a half. Lining that on the straight edge. Lining that up again. You would refold the edges really together. <sighs> I think we're going. We're just gonna continue. I think we're I think we're gonna be pretty good. Oops. See this is what I didn't want happening. This dull rotary cutter. Alright, that's one. Then we need seven of these. Oh my gosh, now I'm paranoid. Did I do that in the right one? Yeah. Yikes! It'll be fine, just cut. I'm viewing it. <laughs> I can only get six out of this half yard. I guess it's not a true half yard, I'm not sure. Three. The machine gun is over. If I'm a hair off, it's not going to be the end of the world. Four. Hey, we might be able to get our seven out of here. Maybe not quite. So maybe I don't need that extra fabric. I kind of want that extra fabric though now. Look at the right side. If you mess up, you can go back. <laughs> Creative. Yep, exactly. That's true. I'll have more. I'll have more extra fabric for my wonky back. <laughs> That's definitely a good way of thinking about it. So one, two, three, four, five. Huh, I might be able to get my seven out of here, and it looks like it. So I might just stick with the, uh, I might just stick with this and not do that other fabric. Or do you think I should just throw in that extra fabric just because? And I might, I might actually be a little shy on this. I really should have switched the blade before this. Six. Okay, I think I may be just a hair shy. <laughs> Actually, we might be just... Oh, gosh. I might be, like, less... I might have it by, like, a millimeter, but I'm going to rotate it around really gently. I might just do it all this this blue border then. Like I was originally intending. I should check. I'll check this one when I'm done though. This one. 
awfully, yeah, it's awfully close. I might not have it, but it, it might be good enough. Let's unfold it. Yeah, I think we're good. All right, I think we're fine. <laughs> wow, that's a way to use fabric. There's like no, um, no waste in this at all. That's awesome. So, <laughs> all right, I think we'll be fine with this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which is more than enough. So awesome, inside border is cut. Oh, you know what? I could just, I could cross cut these right away too. Why don't we do that? So I'll ultimately need like nice edges on these. So I'm gonna cut the selvage off. So I think I'm just gonna stack a bunch up on each other. Might as well have these all ready to sew. I'm gonna just, I'm just scooching the, I know, lucky girl for sure. <laughs> Uh, so these, I might not be doing this perfectly, but this is how we're doing it. I'm just, um, again, I, I, I don't need to salvage. All right, I wonder how we'll do on the rest of it. Hopefully, okay. That was like seriously, there's no waste on, on this inside border. I got super lucky. Yeah, because I was super bummed because I thought I had a bolt of this blue, but I didn't. I only have this little half yard and it and it worked out great. Oh, you went to the neighbors. That's so funny. I do that too. Like whenever a UPS drives up, I'm like, ooh, did I order something? And I got a package. And it's always a bummer when he goes next door. <laughs> I'm with you, Jennifer. Kind of like UPS man. The FedEx guy doesn't even um, ring the bell. He just drops it off and leaves, which I don't know. To me, that's kind of weird. All right, let's do one more up here. I'm hoping to cut all these at once. That's why I'm kind of laying them up this way. So I'm, I'm trying to keep, I'm trying to keep the bottom edge all clean. I mean, I've done an okay up with that. I, you know, it's not perfect. And I'm gonna just trim off these selvages. We'll line up my ruler on one of these vertical lines, and here we go. You know what? Yours doesn't ring it either. I wonder if that's like a policy, a, a FedEx policy, not to ring the bell. Ooh, nice, Jennifer. Happy birthday. That's a good present. Okay, no more salvages. These are completely ready to go. And I think, so um, when we're talking about these like mitered ways of doing it, so sometimes, uh, you can sew, instead of sewing them like right sides together, this doesn't have a right or wrong side, but you know, here's my seam and I fold it this way and then I have this uh, vertical seam. What people do sometimes is they'll sew it this way instead, sew along the diagonal and you'll get a seam like that. And it's just kind of pretty and um, it reduces the thickness in a certain area because it's spread across the diagonal. But I think I'm going to, well, you know, I could do it this way now. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. We'll decide that tomorrow. <laughs> let's just get these out of the way and um, let's get started on the big border and all the binding little fabrics on there. Oh, wow, Jennifer. <laughs> Isn't that something? Man, that's that's uh, an interesting side effect, isn't it? Wow, interesting. 
that's how you do it if you have plenty of fabric. Yeah, and I, and I think we do have a lot of extra fabric, and, I, and I, I'm not using that other fabric anymore, so maybe we will, maybe we will do it that way. Okay, here is the bigger fabric, and man, it's a little dusty on this side, but I'm not going to worry about that too much. So I've taken, this is the bolt still, I've taken it off, I've taken the bolt out just because I needed the storage space. Um, oh man, this bolt feels like it's rolled backwards too, which is annoying. Um, let's see. I'm going to just keep rolling it off the bolt, so I'm going to rotate my ruler around. We're going to do long cuts on this one. Okay. So I'm going to use, well, it may not always be the best idea to use the fold as, as um, the square edge, but you know, I think, I think for the sake of just, I don't know what else to do, I think we're going to just stick with that. So, all right, we need, what do we need? We need eight cuts that are 12 and a half inches and nine cuts that are two and a half inches. You know what? I think I might practice doing the two and a half cuts first, two and a half inch cuts, um, instead of going to the um, big 12 inch ones right away. I don't know, is that silly? All right, I'm gonna unwind a whole pile of my fabric all at once, just because we'll need it. I'm gonna need like feet upon feet upon feet of this. I think this will make it easier. Usually I like doing this in a larger area, so we'll see how it goes tonight. Okay, we got some ready to go here. So I'm gonna line up, I have the folded edge, I'm gonna line that up against one of the straight edges and that will be my straight edge guide. So if I look up here, I'm going to, with every cut, I'm gonna line this edge up here. Yeah, so this is a different blue. This is a darker blue than, uh, um, so here, here's how it's gonna look. So there, like this. Would you use the light, your lighty blue as a binding? No, I think I'm still gonna do, I, I like the idea of the blue, this dark blue going off into space. So. Um, if I did another, if I did another of a, the light blue that I had earlier, like if I did this, let's see if I can frame it up just so it's barely showing in the video. So it, it would look like this. I'd have the inner border, the outer border, and then this tiny little bit of blue. I kind of like, can you guys see that? I kind of like that it goes into nothing because uh, I want most of the focus to stay on the actual quilt, right? That's why I have such a simple border. Uh, just a little framing border and another border because I want everyone's focus to be on all our crazy blocks that we did for the Splendid Sampler. So that's that's my plan for that. Um, this fabric is not folded the greatest. There's a lot of little, you know, puckers and stuff. But you know what? I'm going to just go ahead and cut. And you know what? I think the world's not going to end if this is a little wonky. So I'm going to start with my... Uh, let's do our nine two and a half inch cuts to start out with. So I'm going to just get myself a good straight edge here. I'm going to use my ruler to align on um, lines on the, the background, the uh, cutting board. And my mom doesn't use the cutting board at all for the ruler stuff, so I don't know. I'm probably going against all her rules. Not used to cutting giant bits of fabric. Okay, there we go. Yeah, so Felicia, I'll, I'll do the same dark blue for the binding, I think. I think that'll be pretty. And that's, that's what we're cutting right now. It's my rotary cutter would cut. There we go. I like all these little strings that happen. Okay, so what do we need again? We need nine of these two and a half inches. So these two and a half inches, this is for the binding right now. So now I have this nice straight edge that I just cut that in theory should be square. And I am going to cut nine of these. 
um, we're gonna be here for a little while yet. Thanks so much for like for bearing with me on all that math. And I wasn't expecting you to do, do the binding already, but it makes sense, right? Get all that all this cutting done. Wow, this is gonna be a big problem soon. There we go. Alright, one. Just trying to align this okay. And if I'm a little off, that's just how it's gonna be. We'll be sewing. Um, I'm gonna do it, do the binding in the way where you machine sew it to one side and then you flip it over and um, hand stitch it. I kind of love doing that. I love the hand stitching of a binding. I know some people totally hate it, but some people like it. Oh, Jennifer, I do. I'm, this is also my binding though. So I'm just cutting the binding first, Jennifer. Uh, so I need, for the binding, I need, since I'm doing the same color binding as the border, I need nine cuts of the two and a half inches for the binding. And I thought I'd just practice on this big piece of fabric with, with the, the border or the uh, binding cuts first. And then I will get to the 12 and a half inches. I'm going to use up a ton of this fabric, which is kind of neat. Okay, three. I feel like we're going to get a lot of cutting out of here. Uh, two and a half. This is for four. Running out of cutting board. Four. Actually, oh yeah, I'm gonna have to keep using this ruler because it's my only ruler that's long enough. All right, guys, I ran out of cutting board. I'm gonna have to scooch these over. So this is four. Oh, so you love it too, Marianne. It is. I really do like it. And you know that the project's all almost done. It's your last step. It's just. I love it. All right, I'm gonna scooch this over carefully. I want, I don't wanna move the, like I don't want these two layers of fabric to separate. So I'm just gonna try and do this as carefully as I can. And again, I'm gonna line up the folded part of the fabric as the straight edge as best I can. You know, we're using a pretty small cutting space to do this, so I'm going to have to keep moving all over the place a lot, which, you know, is not always fun. But we're getting her done. Getting her done with what I got, what I got space for. Okay, this is five. So we're almost halfway done with the binding. Wow, this will be a little while yet. I got all those 12 and a half inches, and I think I might have to move it every single time I cut for the 12 and a half or so that's no fun. Straight enough. Yeah, I don't know. These are gonna be a hair wonky. But once they're all sewn together, it'll be fine. Yeah, I, I love the binding. Yeah, you can just chill, you can watch a movie, you get that relaxing hand stitch feel. Yeah, it's really great. I, I do like that a lot. Six. A lot of wrinkles in this fabric. Hopefully that doesn't cause us too many troubles. One, two, three, four, five, six. I could have probably opened this all up and ironed it first, but I don't know. I don't have a big enough area to do that. You always put in a pin in the edge to keep them together so they don't shift. Pin in the edge. Oh, like when I move it over? That's true. I think we'll be okay, but I, I get what you're saying. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, I gotta. Two and a 
half inches. I feel like I cut that one wrong, but no, we're still two and a half inches. I'm freaking myself out. All right, what was that again? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's see if I can get nine without moving this. Moving everything again. And then we'll cut our 12 and a halfers and um, We'll be ready to sew this tomorrow. The wrinkles will go on the iron, the binding half. Oh, that's true. Oh, yeah, duh. That makes sense. And, you know, the wrinkles might make my border a little wonky, but it's not going to kill it. It'll be good enough. Oops, dropped the ruler on the ground. So I keep moving my hand up the ruler so it doesn't slide way out of the way. I mean, we do have those grips on the bottom, but um, so those are helpful. So I still want to make sure my pressure is even across. All right, so let's let's count this up again. We have one, two, three, four, five, um, six, seven, eight, nine. Great. So those are nine. I'm going to keep cutting uh, instead of chopping off um, the selvages. Oh, <laughs> nice, Jennifer. Ah, funny. All right. Set those aside. There we go. We got uh, the border and the binding cut, uh, the, the skinny border. So let's let's do our big border. So I need, I need um, eight cuts at the 12, okay, 12 and a half inches. So this is going to be the challenging part. Uh, I don't think I need this ruler anymore. I need a bigger ruler. So how big is this? This might actually be 12 and a half inches, which would be fantastic. It is. Okay, great. So this is a 12 and a half inch ruler. So each of them are going to be this big, which is crazy town big, but we're going to do it. Oh my gosh, I almost feel like I need to count this, but it's, it's not. It's got the 12 and then it has the extra half, so we're fine. Okay, let's uh, let's give it a go here. So I'll still use this ruler to cut, but that ruler will be uh, my measurement tool, my like second ruler. So all right, now we're gonna have to move this every single time we cut, I think. So again, I'm gonna just use the top or the top um, top border as my or the top one of these lines, the, the full for my straight edge here. And I'm going to need to, actually before we get going, I'm going to roll out a whole pile more of my fabric here from the bolt. All right. Let's see how that does, how this, how this goes. Okay, we're gonna have to move every single time, I think, though. So we got that going. All right, a full 12 and a half inches here. So I'm just gonna line the edge of this ruler. Oh my God, this is gonna be the biggest border on, on a quilt I think I've ever done. <laughs> well, be, just because the inside is, you know, smallish. Wow, this is kind of warped. All right, 12 and a half, cut number one. Cut, there you go, Jennifer, I love it. All right, one of eight, and you know what? Where am I gonna put this? I think it's gonna go over my chair. It's where all good quilt borders go to live, don't they? Just over the back of a chair. Put this up here. Scooch over. So I, I am holding this in place 
So hopefully my edge stays straight enough. We gotta straighten this out. Again, we wanna always match that folded edge to the top. This is such a pretty dark navy color. I think this would be really nice. Okay. Another 12 and a half. I'm surprised I'm able to do this in such a small space. You know, this is the type of stuff that I usually go home to my parents' house and like I'll wait, I'll save up to do the border till I'm at uh, my parents' house and then, then I'll have like a whole big space to lay things out. Not my tiny little dining room table. Alright, I'm shimmying a little bit, but not enough to matter, I think. Okay, that's two. Let's see if behind me. So we're gonna go a hair late today because I do want to get these all cut out. But we'll be ready to sew them together tomorrow, which I'm excited about. I'll have to press, I'll press some the, I know, I have fun joining these big ones. Um, I'll press the front of my quilt out really well tomorrow before I come on or I'll try to. We do need to sew all these together first. All right, you know. in pairs. Okay, that's three. I'm excited to see how little fabric I have left over on this bolt. I think it was like a, a 15 yard bolt. I'm not sure I've used it yet either. Actually, at least I hope not because maybe we'll be pulling out that other blue fabric for the rest of my border if I run out of this fabric, but <laughs> I'm hoping Hoping that won't happen. But still, I like the idea of those goofy mistakes becoming part of the quilt. That's true, I could do some fancy quilting with these borders. I might actually, since I am not great at that either, uh, I might do some really close together just straight line, like, you know, half inch apart, straight lining it or something like that. I don't know. Just a really dense straight line quilting. And then they might cross in the corners. So like, I might only go uh, vertical on the vertical strips and horizontal on the horizontal strips, but I'll go all the way to the end. So it'll crisscross on the corners. That's what I have in my head right now. That seems doable to me uh, for my abilities and my machine's abilities. All right, I think that was four. Let me just count. One, two, three, four. Yep, four. So halfway done with these. Could put the label in the wide border. Oh, that's true. I don't know. I still kind of like the label on the back with all that kooky blocks that we're doing. I like, I like, I mean, my goal with this border is that you don't pay attention to it. <laughs> that it is just a, a simple solid frame uh, where it forces you to look at the blocks right away. But elegant. That's why I like that inside border and I like this rich kind of deep color. I think it's elegant still, uh, but your focus will still go to the center of the quilt. So here, let's let's look at this quick. So I have my quilt, whoa. <laughs> I have my quilt folded up here. So it'll be kind of like this. You know, we'll have all the crazy and then we'll have like these big borders where your eye can just drift off to nothing, right? Ooh, let's, let's put this guy in too. There we go. So it'll be framed with the, the light blue. You know, we'll lose some distance here. And then we'll have this big, big wide border just going off into space. So all of our energy is sucking back into 
the the main quilt area. That's that's kind of my thought process. I want to kind of keep the eye going back to the center of the quilt and not so much on the border, but I want the border to be elegant still. So I don't know. That's kind of that's what I'm I'm shooting for here. Let's hope that that's how it ends up working out. All right, I think that was what was it? 5. I think we got three more yet. And you guys, there's tons on this bolt yet. Man, fabric, this is the problem with fabric, right? Is that you think you're losing, you're using up a, a lot. Like if you, in your fabric bin, like my scrap bin, for example, I think I'm using a ton. I made a whole quilt and in the end, it's as if I didn't use any fabric at all. It's just kind of crazy. It goes on forever. All right, I think I need two more. I will count again after the next one. And I think um, I still have to trim, trim the selvages, but I think I will do that. I'll just do that tomorrow because we've been on here. It's, it's getting late. Unwind some more off the bolt. I think that's probably enough. Okay, on my edge. Okay. I'm gonna do one more and then count, but I think I need two more ultimately. I don't know, any of you guys keep a count? I think I have one more after this one. Eight, right? Yeah, eight, we need eight. Kind of funny. I know we spent a lot of time doing the math on this uh, first. Oops, catching things. But it's kind of fun. It's fun to see like the little bit of math turn into actual cuts of fabric. Eight. Okay. Is oh two. Oh man, that's only. See, that's only just a little over two and a half yards. Oh, then I have a ton of fabric left. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. Okay, that's my thought. So one more to do. So we're we're really not using that much, are we? Well, I, that means I have like nine yards on this bolt yet, which is crazy. Or eight yards at least. It is exciting. This is it. It really feels like a drawing come to life, even though it's just like. It's just the measurements uh, from earlier, but it, it totally feels like we made math into reality. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I only, I only did a kick out of that. I think it's kind of neat though. All right, eight. And that should be that. Okay, so here, here we are. Um, I still have to cut the selvages off of all of these, but we will do it up. We'll do that up tomorrow. So, all right, let's get these rulers out of the way. I want to take a peek at what this is going to look like again. So hold on a sec here. Get my quilt back up here. All right. Yeah, look at this. I have, I have tons and tons of fabric on this bolt still. That's a nice color. I'll use this again. So I'm just trying to roll it up a little nicer. It's a little awkward uh, without the cardboard. Like I said, I, I've pulled the cardboard out of it, but it's so much skinnier. It, it saves me so much space. Let's put that up there as if it's, um, it's like the upper border. Then let's put some side borders on. I'm gonna grab two of these. We'll go up there. And something like that. And, you know, then we'll throw the quilt on there. So here's like a little, a little test of what, uh, what this might look like. Let's, let's fold it over so we got, got the edge of a, edge of a block in there. I always like laying things out to just kind of test it like this. I don't know if you guys like doing that, but I think it's just, we're like auditioning it a little bit. But there, so this is the general, the general look. So um, quilt, 
with all our crazy, tons of stuff happening. Um, this will end up being a two inch border, uh, which I think is, it'll be a little wider than, than this, because I think this is one and a half. So it'll be a little wider than this. And uh, yeah, it'll be about this wide. And then a big old border, big old blue border going off into the distance. But I like this blue because, you know, we have so much dark blue happening in here. But there we go. That is the plan. I hope it goes well. Uh, we'll start sewing this together tomorrow and maybe even get it on to the quilt or, or part of it on the quilt at least. So I am stoked, super stoked. This really kind of matches these blues up here a little bit too. But all right, I'm gonna flip you guys around and we will call it an evening. <laughs> hey guys. I am super duper excited. So here's a, here's with a two inch, wow, I'm pulling this guy apart, but a two inch strip. So we have a pile of these and um, it'll be fun. We'll get our binding all ready. We'll get everything sewn and ready to go. Maybe we'll just, maybe we'll prep all this fabric tomorrow. Cause this, you know, just this cutting took this whole entire time, right? The cutting and the math. So it does take uh, a little bit of, jostling around. I think we'll prep all our pieces. So what that means is we're going to have to sew, how many of those ones? Oh, seven. So uh, I'm going to sew the, the large pieces into twos because on all four sides, we need at least two pieces for that. And I think we'll, I might just sew, I don't know what you guys think of this. I might just sew my inner border into one long strip and then just cut as we go going around the the block. That might be the easiest for me. I don't know. Then we'll be left with one one big piece instead of like a pile of little pieces. And then I'll sew together my pieces for the binding right away too, might as well. So that I'll sew in one giant long piece. And um, maybe we'll even press it tomorrow. So the binding it has to be pressed in half, which takes a little bit of time. Uh, but I think that'll be, that'll be easy peasy as well. Um, you might have noticed that I did not, so I did not cut the binding on the bias, uh, but we don't have any curves. Uh, a bias, cutting it on the bias would have allowed us to stretch the binding easily and it'd go around curves uh, really well. But since we're just, we have just a straight uh, edges around our quilt, I think um, that I didn't cut it on the bias would be fine. That's how you do it, one long piece. Okay. Oh, is Antoinette, is that how you do, that's how you do the inner bindings? Or not the inner bindings, the, the borders? I think that's how we'll do it. I think I'll preserve the most uh, fabric that way. So, all right, I think that's the plan for tomorrow. We'll prep all these pieces and maybe press the binding in half so that I can just sit on the sidelines all ready to go. And then um, Wednesday, we'll spend some time pressing this quilt and we'll sew the sides on, the borders on. I think, I think that's the plan. So, all right, guys, thanks again. Uh, thanks for bearing with me with the math and helping me out. Uh, I will get this up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies, and it'll stay here on Facebook at Penguin and Fish. Uh, I'm excited. We are, like, in the finish line zone of this. I still have the back, but uh, you know what? The, with the front done, that's going to be kind of fun and amazing. So, thanks again. I will catch you guys tomorrow. See you later.